If you don't have a Bible, consider that one yours. If you have one and you just left it in the car, just, just lay it on the seat on your way out. We'll put it back in the box. Either way. All right. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, the last two or three weeks, we've been talking about way, truth, and life. So Jesus said, I am the way. Well, that's like Jesus is the directions to get to the Father. So the Father is like a destination. It's like a place we're trying to get to. And then Jesus said, I am the truth. Well, we know that the truth sets us free. So there are things that hindered us, things that, that were held on to us, that chained us, that kept us from traveling the way to get to the Father. And Jesus being the truth sets us free from those things. Does that make sense? It's what we covered the last couple weeks. So this week is Jesus says, I am the life. And I got, I got thinking about that. Life is something, the word that we use quite a bit. We talk about it in about everything that we do. And I'm thinking, okay, so Jesus models the life? Jesus tells us about the life? Uh, Jesus gives us life? Jesus is the life? What does he really mean here? And if you guys remember how my brain gets when I really start crunching on something the ping pong balls start bouncing around. And when the ping pong balls start bouncing around, you never know which one is going to come up. And so as those balls are bouncing around in my head, I have to like spend Monday thinking about it and Tuesday thinking about it and Wednesday thinking about it. And, and hopefully the one that comes up is the one that I'm being directed to. And, and we have a visual example of what goes on inside of my head at times. And I don't know if they're going to put the, is it up. Okay, yeah, this is what happens inside my head. Those of you that know me well, I'll find myself in conversations and I'll go, I'll bet the ping pong balls are bouncing. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, more than two. It's like six or seven or eight or nine of them bounce around there. I don't know how they're going to come up. So when I get zeroed in and say, all right, Lord, all of these balls are bouncing around in my head. I'm not sure. Jesus is alive. Nobody's disputing that. But what does he really mean in this context when the destination is the father and so I do what I do so often I go back to the book so let's go back to the book with me we're going to be in John chapter 1 John chapter 1 in the first five verses we're looking at what does it say about life in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God now we know that the word is referring to Jesus all things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. People say the Bible's confusing. I'm like, not really. If you're confused, read it out loud. When you hear your own voice, you're like, oh, that's what it meant. So I'm going to read that part. Of, All things came into being through him. How many things? And apart from him, nothing came into being. What has come into a being apart from Jesus? Nothing. Verse 4. In him was life. What was in him? Life In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. This was one of the ping pong balls bouncing around in my head. And man, I meditated on it for a long. In him was life. That's good stuff. So flip over to John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 26. Verse 26. Now, in my book, the words are in red, and that means that, that, means that Jesus said it. For, in verse 26, for just as the Father has life in himself, even so he gave to the Son also to have life in himself. Now, let's think about that for a minute. For just as the Father has life in himself, he gave this to Jesus as well, that Jesus would have life in himself. Now, if the book is calling attention to this, it means it's different than the life that I have in me. Does that make sense? So it's different than the life that I'm born into. It's different than what we would normally think of as life. 
And so I had to think about that for a while, read some other things about what does it mean to have life unto yourself. And, and without going through the other hundred verses, here's what it means. They're the source of life. We got that back in John 1, verses 1 through 1. Nothing came into being that didn't come through Jesus. In other words, the reason why you have life and you have life and you have, is because Jesus gave us life. We don't have life unto ourselves. God has life unto himself, which means who gave God life? Nobody. God is life. Nobody gave him life. He is it. Does that make sense? Just as the Father has life in himself, even so he gave to the Son also to have life in himself. Is this an equality statement? Is this saying that Jesus and God the Father, God the Father and God the Son are equal with each other? As far as life goes, yes. They're both the source of. Okay, stay in chapter 5, and we're going to go backwards a couple verses of verse 21. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. Just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. So if I, if I take the, the, the passages that we read so far, here's what I get. That Jesus is like God in the sense that nobody ever gave him life. He's always been the source of life. Oftentimes in, in Christianese, we say he's the well of that. In other words, this is the, you get the water from the well. So he's the well from which life comes out of. So Jesus is this source. Nobody ever gave it to him. Um, this life can be given to others. In other words, Jesus, God, they can take the life that's within their essence and give it to somebody else. Does that make sense? Everybody with me on that? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So if Jesus, if, God, if they have given you life, the perception of that is light. If you don't have life given to you from God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, what do you have Which appears as darkness, okay? So, are, are these metaphorical statements? Yeah, why? Because how else do you explain it without metaphor, all right? In other words, when the life of God is given to me and received, not rejected, but received, how do I appear to other people, my peers, people that are on my level? How I appear to them as light against darkness, you remember, you remember when Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Nobody lights a lamp and puts a shade over it. And all we're saying is, if you have the light that's life, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You guys remember that from Bible school way back when? Okay. All right, so uh, I'm still, ping pong balls are still bouncing around. This is what I understand about life so far. But let's, let's keep digging. So still in John 5, Verses 39 and 40. 39 and 40. Jesus is still speaking. My words are still in red. Jesus says, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me. And you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. Okay, what did Jesus say? Hold on a minute. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. Did Jesus just tell you to throw your Bibles away? Is that what he just said? Jesus said, hey, that, now you got to remember, what scriptures is Jesus reading? What we call the Old Testament, all right? So Jesus is saying, you search the scriptures thinking that in these scriptures there's life, but there's no life in this book. But the book speaks to me. The book is supposed to lead you to me, and in me is life. So let me talk about the church at large here for a minute. If, if you're holding up the Bible as if it's the fourth member of the Trinity, understand there's no life in that book. But the book leads you to life. The book 
describe somebody where life is evident. Does that make sense? So is Jesus saying throw the Bibles away? He's saying no, but don't make it more than what it is. What it is is a map to get to me. What I am is the way, the truth, and the life to get to the Father. Amen, right? All right. Uh, so anyway, I, I, was, I was digging on that, and then I flipped over to John 10. John 10, verse 10. Still in red, Jesus says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Who's the thief? All right. The devil. Say, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So it isn't just that Jesus wants us to have the life that's from within himself that he's free to give. He wants us to have as much of it as we possibly take abundantly. Staying in John 10, I flip down to, to number 17. And then Jesus says, for this reason, the Father loves me. Watch this now. For this reason, the Father loves me. Who's the Father? God Father. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life willingly so that I can take it up again. And that's when I start asking the question, what are we talking about? Or what kind of life are we talking about? Are we talking about like I was born on this day in this city to these parents with these siblings, lived on this address for a period of time, got a job, got married, had kids, did this, did that, died on? Is that, was that what we're talking about, life? Stay in John 10 and let's go down to verse 27. 27, 28, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I will give eternal life to them, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My sheep hear my voice. Are, are we sheep? Good thing to be a sheep, right? If you were here for I am the good shepherd, you realize sheep was a good thing, all right? Sheep are good. Whose voice are we hearing? If we're sheep, whose voice are we hearing? The shepherd, right? The shepherd who's going to guide us, protect us, love us, feed us, water us, all of that stuff. Jesus says, as the shepherd, the sheep hear my voice. I know them and they know me. That speaks to a relationship. And I will give them eternal life. So we're talking about eternal life, not just physical life, but, e but eternal life. We're talking about salvation. We're talking about being saved, right? We're talking about our inheritance as a member of God's family. Eternal life. So when does this happen? Does this happen before or after death? I, f I feel like the guy, what, what is the, is it the Tonight Show where the reporter goes out with the question and just ask people on the street and have to answer it? You know, I always get those wrong. And so here I'm like going out to the Christians with the microphone. I'm saying, okay, you, you, you believe in Jesus? Yeah, okay. So let me ask a question real quick. Now, this is a hard question. Uh, do you believe in eternal life? Yes? Okay. When does that start? I got a lot of people saying now. That's good. It doesn't start after death because Jesus says in John 10, I mean, we're still in the same chapter. He says in verse 17, for this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. Isn't that talking about death and resurrection? I got a yes and a no. I love it when we're not in agreement with each other. That means, that means we're digging in here. That's good stuff. Okay, we're going to come back to that question, but let's read one more thing. John 17, 3. John 17, 3. My words are read. Jesus is still speaking. He says, this is eternal life. It wasn't that the question when I was on the street? I said, okay, this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. 
Okay, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, right? The way meaning the directions are over here. The truth is I'm releasing you from all this stuff that's keeping you from traveling the road. And the life. So what's eternal life? That you get there. That you know God. And you know me, talk, as if I'm Jesus, and you know me by which is the method to get to God the Father. So what's eternal life? Relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. That makes sense, right? I didn't add too much to it. I mean, it's plausible by what we've read so far. So does eternal life start after death? It absolutely starts after death. It starts after your death of self. So when Jesus said, my father loves me because I have laid down my life so I can pick it up again, it's the same thing we do. It's what baptism is. It's what falling to your knees and and crying out in repentance is about. It's about saying, Lord, I can't do this. And he said, I know you can't. That's why I'm God and you're not. Well, I, I can't get to the father. Jesus says, that's why I'm the way. That's why I'm the truth, and that's why I'm the life. I'm all of these things so that your eternal life can start now. But it does start after death. As we strip away those things that bind us, that hold us, that chain us, we gain more and more and more of the life that is the very essence of God. Well, wait a minute. I, th- I thought that when I came forward and I got down like at, at the altar, you ever notice a lot of churches have altar calls, but they don't have altars? I always found that. Why don't they just call it a stair call? But Okay, side issue. Anyway, you come forward to the altar, and then you have the little sinner's prayer card that you confess, that you read, and somebody says, congratulations, you're in the kingdom. Now you know Jesus. But that person doesn't know Jesus any more than when they came down the aisle. But there's a starting point, and then we make this way too complicated for something that isn't very complicated. What is the desire of your heart? If the desire of your heart is that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and through him you're going to meet God the Father, then guess what? You're on the right road. You're on the way. Do you have stuff that's keeping you from going the speed limit? Yeah, you betcha. But the truth of who Jesus is, the, the, the freedom that comes through forgiveness and repentance and absolution, you start dropping cargo and you get like you start going faster. And then all of a sudden the life, life is how, how is life viewed to others? Light, okay? Do you need light when you're on the path? Yes. Now the path is illuminated by the glow of God who is within you as you are getting closer to the very presence of who God is. God is calling us back to himself. Why? Because that was always his intention. That was always his. Religion has made this way too hard. It was always God's intention that what he wanted to do was for us to be his children. That he wanted to walk in the cool of the garden with us and love us and teach us and show us and delight in us. All of the things that you like to do with kids. It's times a hundred with God in us. So how, how do I pin it down as to like when I became a Christian? Forget about that. Who cares? Is the desire of your heart to be with God? If it is... Count yourself blessed. You're on the way. So when did my eternal life start? At the desire. Well, when, who cares? Love the Lord with how much? All of you. All of you. I find myself in conversations <clears throat> where people use a, a, a word called truly saved. And they'll say, well, they, they, they weren't tr- truly saved. As if, as if you know, the, the rescue team threw them a fake rope. I, what do you mean truly saved? Why would we even come up with such a preposterous collection of words 
How can anybody walking the face of the earth be an effective judge as to the desires of somebody's heart? How can we make any call whatsoever as to, well, they're saved and they're saved and they're, but they're not truly saved. And Where does that come from? That's certainly not here. That's certainly, what did Jesus say eternal life was? Knowing the Father through the Son. That's what eternal life is. Being saved is not about a savings account. It's not, you're not being saved for an event to happen later. You know how you have those things, well, I'm going to save this until it's cold, and I'm not going to wear it. That's not what being saved means. Being saved means it's less about the date, and it's more about the journey. And so every step closer I get to God the Father, I'm being saved a little bit more. And I take another step, I'm being saved a little bit more. And the, far, the closer I get to, into the presence of the Lord, the less concerned I become about what day was I truly saved. Who cares? Are you pursuing God? Then let's do that. Don't worry about that. Let's do this. And let's gather up other people as we go. closer I get to God the Father, the closer you get to God the Father, the more the light within you radiates out. So when you look at somebody's life and you see that glow that emanates from them that can only be from Jesus, are you really concerned about when that happened? Or are you concerned about how much good that's doing right there in the moment? And that happened after their spiritual death. So it don't really matter what the physical death is along the way. Because that glow that's coming out of there marks them as God saying, this one is mine. And you can tell it from the light that illuminates on everybody. So as we think about our life and we think about the years we have to live or the, or the hours we have to live, what we think about is this. Is the light shining and if the light is shining, then we're on the way. If the light isn't shining, we're asking, why isn't the light shining? Is, do I have a, 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 a shade of some sort that I just need to remove? Do I have a fear of some sort that I need to remove? Or do I have to question whether I have the life at all? Have I ever spiritually died? And those are questions the church can't answer. Those are questions you answer. God answers with you. Those are questions you put your forehead on the floor and you say, Lord, heaven, I love you with all that I have. And I know I'm a sinner and I need a grace. But I want to pursue you with all that I am. And the Lord is faithful to that prayer. Every time, all the time. If he wasn't, he wouldn't be God. Saved means life. And life is visible as light. And I have seen the light shine out of all of you here this evening. Let's prepare our hearts for communion. Lord in heaven, I love you. Lord, these folks love you too. Lord, we want to come as clean as we can be to the table to the altar.